All right. Uh, well, since it is 12 o'clock, we will get going. Um, we'll start this thing off with some introductions. And again, thank you for joining us for the first uh, session of our four-part webinar series. Today we're going to discuss um, why single gender education and specifically why boarding schools can be a really good option for uh, a variety of students. Um, today we do have with us our headmaster, uh, Tim Byans, as well as our Dean of Academics and Guidance, Melissa Nipper. Um, and I, my name is Peter Wickman. I'm the Director of Admission here at Grand River Academy. Um, and, and I'll let them introduce themselves. All right, so uh, Tim. Thanks, Peter. Uh, my name is Tim Vines. I'm the headmaster here. This is my fifth year at Grand River Academy. I've always worked in all boys boarding schools. Uh, before coming here, I worked at a boarding school in Connecticut, and uh, I, I couldn't imagine myself at a better place than Grand River Academy, so thank you, Peter. All right, hi, I'm Melissa Nipper. I have actually been on campus now for 18 years. Um, I came in as the guidance counselor and um, director of the student assistance program. I'm also the college placement counselor. And I've also worn many hats here as living in a dorm and living on campus and just working with all of our young men and their families. Yeah. And, uh, and again, my name is Peter Wickman. I'm the director of admission and financial aid uh, here at Grand River Academy. This is only my second year here, but I am a big advocate for boarding schools. Um, I am going to be predominantly in the background here just moderating um, and uh, Tim and Melissa are the experts on the panel. Just a couple nuts and bolts. We are going to try to stay on topic as we go through these slides um, so that we can keep to our 30-minute schedule. Uh, we will answer questions at the end. We have disabled the chat capabilities. However, we do have the Q&A uh, section available. So if you have a question throughout the um, presentation, please just let us know. Um, you can type it as you think of it, but we will, um, we will answer it at the end. Okay, so, so just know that any questions that you have will be addressed at the end of our webinar today. All right, so Tim is going gonna, is gonna to take the first turn here um, speaking about, uh, you know, some, some benefits of specifically in all boys' education. I will preview just some of the topics. Um, you know, we're going to talk about adolescent male uh, brain development. We're going to talk about boy-friendly learning environments, um, you know, the academic, social, and emotional development of young men, which is very directly tied to our mission. And then specifically being a, a small school, um, some of the benefits about being a big fish in a little pond, being recognized and appreciated, and receiving an individualized educational experience. All of those are really um, sort of key components to uh, the educational experience that we offer, but also um, some of the, the experiences that you can get at a lot of um, small single gender schools. So, Tim? Thanks, Pete. As I noted earlier, I've always worked in all boys boarding schools and I have a huge affinity for single gender education, uh, whether it is uh, all boy or uh, all girl education. I think the, the merits of that educational model uh, are, are, are quite significant. Uh, dealing with the uh, boy learner, uh, the learning style for boys is uh, very unique. Uh, it, it, when you're in an all-boy learning environment, uh, we're able to gear uh, what we do in the classroom and what we uh, do outside of the classroom uh, uh, purely to their success. Uh, inside the classroom, our teachers understand uh, how their brain works. Uh, boys, they have a station mechanical thinking style. Uh, they like to be hands-on learners. Uh, in the classroom, uh, if you were to visit uh, Grand River Academy, you would see open discussions. You would see free-form learning. You would see interactive learning. Uh, we want to help our boys stay focused and engaged. A typical 45-minute class period will probably have four, five, maybe even six different activities during that short time. The point of that is, to keep our boys active and engaged uh, in learning uh, during those class periods. 
our teachers are experts. Uh, they know how to teach our student. Uh, they know that our boys are hands-on. They know that they're tactile. They know that they must keep them active. Uh, our teachers are flexible and individualized. With our small class sizes, our average class size is six students. We can make learning relevant to the student. And I think that's incredibly important, especially when dealing with boys, uh, really relating that background knowledge uh, to what they're doing in that class that day. Uh, with small class sizes, we're able to build the foundation uh, and not the foundation necessarily uh, of the academic uh, knowledge, but we're able to build the executive functioning skills. We're able to build the test taking strategies. We're able to build the study skills. Uh, and, and when you juxtapose that to uh, maybe a private day school, which has larger class sizes, or even a public school, where there may be 30 or 35 students in the classroom, that's just not able to occur. Uh, in boarding schools, uh, whether it's co-ed or even single gender, you're going to find those small class sizes and GRAs uh, no different than that. Uh, especially when dealing with boys, and, and I find this uh, quite amazing, and we see this all the time, uh, boys are so much more likely to uh, have an affinity and, and enjoy studying art, uh, music, theater, uh, get involved in things uh, that they otherwise wouldn't have done in a co-ed setting. Our, our fine arts program and our technology program uh, is quite amazing. And I think if it was a co-ed setting, if it was a co-ed day school or even a co-ed boarding school, uh, many of our boys may not find that path, may not find uh, that interest uh, that they're able to find here. Uh, I, I think to just uh, sum up the thesis of that, uh, being a single gender school, we're able to enrich education exponentially. Uh, I would like to note, and we will be forwarding this on uh, to all the participants, uh, we have a white paper, it's called The Characteristics of an All-Boy Learning Environment, and I hope you do like that. Uh, but to get back to uh, being a, a single gender school, uh, boys need mentors. Uh, they need role models, uh, and our teachers are those mentors. Our, our, our staff here are those role models, and we help them grow meaningful, healthy friendships. I think that's quite important. We focus on the social, the emotional, and the intellectual growth of our students here. All of those are equal. All of those are uh, have the same importance, and I think that uh, uh, generally facilitates a, a well-rounded person by the time they leave Grand River Academy and move on to whatever that next step may be. Uh, outside of the classroom, we want we want to help our boys uh, self-discover. We want to help them form lifelong friendships. Uh, we understand that boys need outlets, and oftentimes those outlets are not just athletic in nature. However, I'm a firm believer, and we are as a school philosophically that uh, we don't cut from our athletic teams. Any boy who wants to play a sport can play a sport. Uh, you know, there's no such thing as a retired ninth grade baseball player. Uh, we want to encourage them to come out and participate, uh, enjoy the sportsmanship, the camaraderie, and have fun. But besides just athletics as outlets, it's very important to offer other outlets because athletics isn't uh, isn't just for, uh, you know, that's not something that uh, appeals to every student and we get that. So having academic challenges, having uh, uh, te technology outlets for them after school, having other uh, opportunities through clubs and activities, uh, that's just as important as our athletic program. Uh, in, in general, we want our boys to learn life skills. We want them to gain independence. Uh, when I talk to families, I often describe our environment as a as structured independence. And that means that we have guardrails, uh, but within those guardrails, uh, students are able to live in an independent lifestyle, but their guardrails are always there. Uh, equally important, uh, we think it's important to uh, help our students grow those EQ skills. So uh, what does empathy look like? Uh, you know, what, what, what does uh, being compassionate, not just towards others, but uh, compassionate to other cultures, uh, that's very important. And, you know, I think when you uh, look at uh, universities, what they're looking for is not just what appears on a transcript. Uh, what they're looking for also appears, uh, you know, they're, what they're looking for is also those other skills. Uh, so having a close-knit community, uh, celebrating diversity and the uniqueness of everybody here, 
not just our students' uniqueness, but also our faculty and staff and Grand River Academy's uniqueness is quite important. Yeah, and as, as you can tell, um, you know, we kind of are, are not necessarily reading each slide because these are going to be available after the fact. Um, we do have a lot of statistics about the science behind the male brain and differentiating factors between the development of the male brain and the female brain. But, um, you know, what, what Tim was just speaking to is kind of how all that ties together in a practical sense. Um, you know, moving on to some specifics about boarding school, um, Melissa is going to take over in just a sec. And, um, you know, as she oversees uh, our academics, our, our guidance, and all of our support programs, she can speak very specifically to um, how our, our boys and how, how boarding schools prepare their students for uh, the next step in the journey. And, um, you know, almost all boarding schools in the U.S. are college preparatory, um, so certainly our goal is going to be to open a lot of doors and prepare the students for um, that next phase in their life, and um, I'll let Melissa talk a little bit about the, those specifics. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Pierre. Thank you, Tim. Uh, you know, as a parent myself, it's not one of those things that when you hold your newborn child, you say, boy, I can't wait to send them away to a boarding school. Um, but in fact, that's why we're here and that's why we have been around for quite a long time and there is a place for boarding um, for many kids out there. And being an all boys boarding school, you know, what does that look like and why are we here and why have we been around for so long? And I always go back to community and relationships and how we can really be an essential part in creating and helping a young man uh, just kind of go into adulthood and find success. Um, with our relationships here, you know, all of our faculty, they don't go home at the end of the day. They live in the dorms, and that's pretty unique, and that's pretty special. Uh, so you might have your teacher in class for math, and then later that evening, you're actually in the dorm um, at your teacher's table having dinner with he and his wife and their children, petting their dog. Again, I go back to those relationships, and that's what's so special about boarding. Um, just creating and learning how to have those effective relationships, even outside of the home, can sometimes be a breath of fresh air when the kids do go home, because you're able to then enjoy that relationship with your son, with that child. No longer are you the person that at night you're pulling your hair out trying to force them to do their homework. We take that away. Let us be that person for you. Let us uh, just, you know, take all that stress out of your life, and you can just enjoy a relationship with your child. And again, that's really a benefit of a boarding school, especially where you can get one where the kids are with with um, their teachers and their families and their children. Um, so that's pretty special uh, in my mind. So another benefit of the boarding school is really, again, that 24-7. Um, so we're here, you know, um, all the day, and then the, the day ends. But again, their counselors are on campus. Um, their teachers are here. They're their baseball coaches. They're, they're the ones that put them to bed at night. So another positive with that is, you know, when you're looking at the counseling aspect, um, a lot of times when kids are in counseling, they go in the evenings, they go on the weekends, they go in to see their counselor, and their counselor may have no idea of what's going on outside of what this student is bringing to them. Well, here on campus, it's very unique, and we're in a very unique position to where our counselors are speaking with the faculty, they're speaking with the staff, they're speaking with the maintenance about the dorm rooms, and right down to even um, the ladies that run the student center. What is going on with these kids? What are their needs and how can I help support them? They're hearing from peers. What are their needs? How can I help support them? Really, it is the full community. And again, I'll keep going back to that word. It's the full community that helps each other be successful. Um, you know, with kids with ADHD and a number of possibly other uh, differences and emotional needs, there is a medication that kids are on. I wish that we could say this is the, the magic medication, but there's you know a trial and error period. 
another benefit of boarding school is, again, we are with those kids 24 seven. So we see them during the day. We see them in the afternoons, we see them in the evenings, and we see them in the early mornings. If there is a medication change, we're able to really watch out for how that is affecting the students. We get the input from the dorm masters and from the teachers. Again, it's a full community effort. So then we can relay this information back to the parents, back to the psychiatrist. And the psychiatrist can actually even talk with, with everybody in our community too. It's all about how can we help support this individual child in every aspect um, of his being. So that's another, uh, you know, a big point for us. But then again, going back to this 24-7 approach to students, uh, what is our goal? Our goal is to help these students learn how to be successful so that when they go to college, they know how to be successful at the collegiate level. Um, so some kids will come to me and say, well, Mrs. Nipper, I'm doing really well here. I've raised my D's to B's and my C's to A's. And, you know, I might have had a 0.1 GPA coming in, but now I have a 3.5. Well, it's not that I'm a better student. It's because it's easier. However, I love it when they bring this up because then I can go back to them and say, it's not that it's easier. It's that you now learned how to learn. You know how to be a successful student. So we break that down. We don't believe in zeros here, not at all. What is zero teaching them? It's okay to not turn your work in. That's not okay in college. In college, there are zeros. It, at Grand River Academy, we believe in gaining knowledge. Gaining knowledge is what's going to take them into success at the college level. If we allow the zeros, they haven't gained that knowledge. So we are constantly requiring them to get their work done. We have structured study times in the evenings and our hope is they can break the bad habits that they've developed over the years and really take in and create these, these good habits um, so that when they go to college, what are they doing every day? They're setting aside time every day to do their work. They're not turning in um, just bad work. We also don't accept that. We have them redo it. Again, it's all about gaining knowledge. Um, but when they go to college, they have these better skills, this better skill set to be able to be a more successful student. And really, um, our kids go to college saying, wow, I aced my math because I was so overprepared. Physics was so easy, I was tutoring other kids in my class because I was overprepared. And that's what we love to hear. Uh, but something we've also implemented, just to again, help our seniors kind of see how um, college might be, second semester senior year, we start to release the reins a little bit on our seniors to give them a dry run, so to say, to see how um, it might feel like if we don't require a study session, uh, how being your own self-advocate uh, feels, and we really encourage that that second semester. Um, if we see them starting to fall, that's when we gladly step in, make it a teachable moment and say, okay, let's, let's review why your math grade maybe dropped a little bit. Can you understand why that happened? And again, making that a teachable moment so that, again, when they go to college, they are going to be ready for it. Um, so just, yeah, going through that slide, again, we don't want to kind of read the slides, but going off of that, just what I said about, um, you know, working with those kids, getting them ready, but also just as we do with counseling and having our counselors meet with everybody to see how they can support the individual student, I also love to hear from the teachers, what do you think this student uh, needs in order to look at colleges? There are all types of colleges out there, thousands and thousands, big and small and private um, and public, some with very specific programs uh, to help support kids, some with, you know, again, you're going to have to use your self-advocacy skills to go uh, to be successful and get the assistance, but I love to get the input from our teachers when I'm starting that process with them. So when we're searching, we know that we're going to put a list together of schools that are really going to benefit these kids, right down to not only academics and support needed, but hey, is this kid a real social kid? Really, let's look at schools that he's going to be able to um, be social at, or this student, you know, he might be more shy or have more anxiety. We're really going to need schools that outside of the classroom, they're going to have support for that as well. Um, so again, I really see the benefits from what we do here 
going beyond um, and following them into college. Uh, and just finishing up, um, just the support also, again, the individual, the community, uh, something that I think is essential to a boarding school is really looking, like Tim said, at the emotional needs, at the academic needs. So being able to identify that, but then follow through with each of those individual needs. So we have a very strong student assistance program here that really does look at the emotional, social, and academic aspects of the students, and this goes beyond the school day. So whether it's counseling, whether it is um, additional academic support with our Foundations of Learning program, or whether it's with um, peer support groups uh, in the evenings, that's again, another benefit of the boarding schools and you know the strong student assistance program that can be a 24 seven program. Yeah, and so, you know, uh, a lot of this circles back to uh, community um, and the idea that, that you know, your child, uh, specifically your, your son, um, feels like, like he is part of that community. Um, at GRA, that's something that is, of course, essential, um, and we want to build that into not just our academic and extracurricular programming, but also student life, and uh, we want to develop a young man's confidence as he goes through his formative years, which uh, you know, which certainly are um, 14 years old through about 19 years old. So we want to support him uh, in all of those areas. So as we we've kind of um, wrapped up with the slides, and again, these slides will be available. We had a lot of statistics on those slides, and rather than just read them to you, we wanted to give you some depth and some practical implications of what those slides look like uh, in practice. So please do refer back to the slides for the statistics on both benefits of boarding school and the difference between male and female uh, learners, but at this time we'd be happy to take some questions, and we already have some. Um, so I will first ask the question. Some of them are anonymous, so I'll just leave it as that. Um, this first question says, "How do teachers actually teach any differently than a traditional public or day school?" Uh, because I'm considering a few different schools. Um, you know, that's great. You definitely do need to consider multiple school options. Um, Melissa, do you want to talk to specifically how our teaching is different? Well, again, we are, our teachers are able to um, take their kids to coffee shops. You know, they jump in the van because our class sizes are so small. It's very common for them to go off campus. Um, on a daily basis even. I know that we have um, some wetlands up the street and our science teachers love to go there. But in a public school, that's not really able to happen because you know typically there's not enough room for kids in a little van. Uh, so they're able to do all of that. And again, they're able to have those study sessions in the evenings, um, sitting around the table while eating warm cookies from the oven. Uh, sometimes it gets right down just to that. Awesome, awesome, thank you. Um, another question that we have is, so we actually have two questions about this, I'll kind of blend the two, but the, the central point of it is how do you handle conflicts uh, either between roommates, uh, bullying on campus, uh, any, any of those sorts of uncomfortable situations that kids will inevitably deal with. Um, yeah, and what's so important for teenage boys is they just want to be heard. Uh, so again, they want to be heard, but sometimes it's best hearing them one-on-one. -on -one. So, you know, not calling them out in front of people, but taking them aside with somebody that has a good positive relationship with them, whether it's the door master or whether it's their advisor or their counselor, even pulling the student aside and saying, hey, what's going on? Let me hear. And then going to the other student saying, what's going on? Let me hear. And then just working from there. As long as they know that they're being, being heard, I am confident that we can rectify any situation. Yeah, and, and to piggyback on that, uh, one of the benefits of being and working at a boarding school or being a student at a boarding school is the many hats everybody wears. You know, so we're coaches, we're advisors, we're teachers, we're dorm parents, we take activities, uh, we're involved in student life, uh, we're involved in other programs, and all of these hats help address this. 
uh, yes, uh, when you have uh, 100 people uh, living at one place, uh, th there is going to be conflicts from time to time. But with all these different hats and all these different layers, all these different planes that we're working on, uh, we're able to help our students navigate and forge healthy relationships. Yeah, and just what Tim was saying too, with the, the cross-section of kids that we have here, uh, we have kids with so many different interests, so many different uh, gifts and wonderful skills, and also kids with needs, and they always really do find their niche here. They are able to find that one really good or those three really good friends um, that they're able to you know, either play guitar with or play video games with or go out and um, enjoy the sports with. Uh, so we really do support and encourage health, healthy relationships. But again, because it's a 24-7 um, position, if we do have concerns about maybe some relationships not being good, we feel confident that they're able to work through those issues with them. Great. And we do have just two more questions that I want to answer. Um, one, which ties a little bit to this, um, you know, with the supportive environment and finding friend groups and things like that. There was a question about diversity, uh, specifically at Grand River Academy, but then also uh, a larger question about diversity and welcoming diversity um, in boarding schools. Um, both of you have, have more experience than, than I do at boarding schools, um, you know, so if one of you wants to yeah, Melissa. Well, I think this is such a big benefit. Our global community here that we have on campus, whenever these kids go to college, it's a great practice here. Again, we talk about the academics and building up the, the academic standpoint and the better study habits. Just being in this very small community makes us so unique because we are so diverse. In fact, more and more colleges are asking um, for supplemental essays about how each student can handle diversity. And I feel that we are setting our kids up for tremendous success um, because of just everybody that they're able to be around and live with on, in a very close um, quarters. <laughs> awesome. And then the last question, uh, which, which will conclude our webinar today because we are just about at the half hour mark is, uh, and I hear this all the time, but will my son meet girls uh, if he goes to an all boys boarding school and are there any interactions that happen with other schools? Um, you know, how is my son supposed to uh, have a girlfriend or develop those healthy relationships? Well, as a mom of two boys, I would tell them you can meet girls in college. But in all, <laughs> don't worry about that now. But really, um, with social media uh, and our student life program here on campus, that's not an issue whatsoever. Yeah, I mean, just anecdotally, uh, a couple weeks ago, we had a uh, dancing class on campus where we invited uh, some girls from the local high school to come out and learn how to ballroom dance with our students, and they loved it. Yeah, and our students do go to the movies and the mall and on ski trips on the weekends. Um, you know, they, they have a lot of opportunities to engage socially with, uh, with peers, with, with girls, um, you know, with all of that. So um, while I understand the the question, um, you know, please know that uh, at an all boys boarding school, at GRA, at, at any all boys boarding school, you're certainly going to have opportunities to intermingle and build relationships with, um, you know, uh, with, with teens of the opposite gender as well. So I do want to thank everybody again for, um, for joining us today. Um, we had a good group and a lot of really good questions. I hope that you enjoyed the webinar. This was recorded, so you will be able to see it in the future. Additionally, we will email out that white paper on the essential characteristics of a boy-friendly learning environment. I hope that you will join us for our next episode in the webinar series, which is two weeks from now on Wednesday, March 1st from 12 to 12.30. We'll be talking about affordability, financial aid, and uh, a return on your investment, as we do understand that um, boarding schools do have a, a hefty price tag, um, but more for that next time. Um, so thank you, Melissa. Thank you, Tim. Um, thank you, Kelly Jones, for uh, making sure that this would work, and we hope to see you all in two weeks.